Good morning, everyone. Uh, again, I hope you can hear me. Uh, thanks for joining for today's call, for today's uh, session about end-to-end edge -end, uh, AI lifecycle management with NVIDIA Metropolis. Today, we're going to talk about edge AI, and also we're going to talk about how can you automate, uh, basically, and accelerate uh, your edge devices uh, development uh, with NVIDIA tools. I'll be your host. Uh, my name is Abu Bakr Karali, and uh, I'm a Senior Solution Architect in Intelligent Video Analytics. Um, another way of saying I work with computer vision and enterprise grade uh, deployments. I focus a lot in computer and computer vision, machine learning, and data science. And uh, my work support region is uh, EMEA. So I support Europe, Middle East, and Africa when it comes to computer visual workloads. And I deal mostly with uh, our computer vision stack, something like uh, DeepStream, uh, Tile Toolkit for training, Tensor RT, uh, uh, Triton Inference Server, and also our Edge stack. Also, sometimes I support data science projects with Rabbids. Yeah, this is my context. Please, if you have any question, let me know. Let's go directly to the content of today. So basically, Sorry. I am sorry. So right now, we are witnessing a revolution inside Edge AI. So Edge AI is going everywhere. Like right now, we can see applications for Edge uh, analytics uh, everywhere in the industries. We can see, for example, that we are having a lot of feedback or a huge impact of Edge AI on um, road management and also uh, road monitoring. We have millions of factories that also need a lot of automation uh, when it comes to uh, industrial inspection pipelines for judging and basically improving the quality of the project the products. We have retail stores where we can have several applications for Edge devices when it comes, for example, to um, the recommendation of uh, of the projects. Also, we can see how fast uh, people walk in the aisles. We can recommend projects based on that, and also we can rearrange uh, the shelves and the products up to this uh, recommendation uh, suggestions. We have millions of flights a year that also need to be monitored. We need to check uh, for for quality. Uh, for example, the connection on the on the flight on the flight. We also need to check security measure in the flights. We have tons of farmlands that also needs automation. So the applications are everywhere when it comes to edge deployment. And in order to deploy at edge, we found out that we need, we usually need few certain components. The first one is we need software defined approach. It gives you the flexibility when it comes to uh, application. Uh, and also when it comes to different use cases. So this is the first component that we need when we try to automate an edge here. The second thing is real-time response. And this is actually the main reason uh, why we usually go to edge deployments. <clears throat> because think about, for example, something like vehicle, uh, automated autonomous vehicles. Autonomous vehicles is needs to take decision within milliseconds because every 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 delay that you get in that basically cost cost a lot so you need something quite fast that not only have low latency but its latency is basically within millimeter so within milliseconds and the third here is as you can expect security because when you have a deployment of off-site basically you need to secure it you need it the AI core that you put into uh, that uh, edge is is valuable. The edge itself is valuable, so you need to secure it physically and also from a computer uh, science point of view. And not only because we talk about edge deployment, that doesn't mean that we're going to need cloud computing. Cloud computing also can be can be can sorry can be also part of uh, of the game here because. It's important to have a cloud where you can, for example, connect 
uh, your device send uh, metadata, send um, analytics if you want as well. And also, uh, it might be an uh, opportunity for you to offload some of the processing if you don't need so much um, real time processing capability for it. And finally, which is also very important, how can you deploy and basically manage all of CSH devices that you're having in? Let's say that you have an airport deployment with maybe 100 cameras or something. How can you manage all of these deployments and roll out updates and um, do, for example, over the air uh, upgrades? So, before jumping into the solution, we need to understand why are we witnessing this revolution when it comes to uh, Edge AI? And the solution here, and the answer here is Edge AI sits on top of three main pillars. The first one that leads to this revolution is Internet of Things. Right now, a lot of devices, a lot of sensors, a lot of compute units are connected to the Internet. And by, mean, by a lot here, we mean billions and billions of, of uh, of devices and these devices are added continuously to the internet they are all all the day all uh, all around the hour adding uh, a lot of data also sending a lot of data so basically this can that makes uh, that makes up to to basically the foundation of deep learning later the foundation of deep layer of uh, sorry of big data so right now we have big data out of these sensors the second pillar here that that Edge AI set uh, on top as well is a 5G uh, networking. So basically, right now uh, we have fast, more reliable, more secure um, infrastructure that can support uh, analytics and can support um, deployment on the edge uh, and can support very low latency when it comes to that. And the third component here which also led to the success of its AI uh, as a field, is artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence sits at the core of, uh, of each edge AI deployment. With the uh, advancement in artificial intelligence, we got highly accurate models, we got uh, robust models, and also we got uh, high throughput models, which mean that we can process fast. And that's basically made, made edge AI more appealing for everyone. But when we are trying to build an edge AI system, we are usually faced with different problems. If we, th if we thought about the problems and challenges when, we come, when it comes to building an AI, edge AI system, we will find it, it's mainly around uh, these six components. Whether you are a developer, a CTO, um, product manager, project manager, you will be faced with these challenges. So first, in order to build an edge AI device, at the core of it, you know, the AI model, first thing we have to deal with is the team. We need to compose a team that, you know, know multiple train, training framework. We need to choose one of them, for example and basically uh, work with its functionalities towards our goal. The second thing will be, OK, which model can we use in order to, to, to achieve our goal? The third model, the third challenge we have, do we have large enough data sets? Is this data enough for us to train the model and produce an accurate model? And then the fifth, uh, the fourth one will be, all right, so once we have done the training, are these models that we are having the most optimal ones in terms of performance, in terms of throughput? Can it can it process real time information? Well, for example, when it comes to videos, OK, if it process uh, real time information, when it comes to like the video we're having, if, if we scale the video to maybe 4K to 8K, would it still perform? So how can we optimize it? How can we make it fast? And then we also need to tackle the problem of accelerating the whole pipeline because an AI, if we accelerated only the AI, it will it will be blocked by several other components. 
For example, if you don't have enough decoders to decode videos, that basically puts on top of uh, the computation power that you need. And then we have multiple deployment options. How to choose the best hardware, how to choose uh, the best architecture for our development, our deployment. And finally, we have the use cases we are going to use. So these are a group of challenges, and it's as you can see, the challenges are enormous. So how can we categorize these challenges? We can categorize these challenges into like three main hows. So how to train, how to build, and how to deploy. That's in a nutshell. When we talk about train, we will talk about how to choose a model, how to choose a library, and also how to um, optimize during the training our models. When we talk about build, we will talk about how to accelerate the whole pipeline for computer vision, not only uh, the AI. When we talk about deployment, we will talk about how can we deploy and what are the challenges uh, that we are going to solve here. But the good thing is with NVIDIA Metropolis ecosystem, you can find all the tools that you need in order to uh, build and manage your AI system. Starting from the base layer here, you can find different hardware sets that can support your uh, application. You have Jetson devices and Jetson appliances where, it, where, where you can do uh, Edge AI on embedded device somewhere and basically you drop it. It's a low cost, it's also low uh, power consumption models. You have the edge server, which is, uh, think about it as server and also a workstation that can be deployed somewhere and you can do processing on top of that. Uh, it's powered by discrete GPU. And then you have also the cloud. So basically the hardware can support cloud workloads. On top of our hardware, we have an ecosystem of software as well that accelerates this vision AI development for you. If we started at the left corner here, you will find Omniverse. So Omniverse is a, an engine, a graphics engine for, for all the visualization workloads. But here it plays uh, an important role within Metropolis because with Omniverse, you can generate synthetic data. And synthetic data has been, it has gained a lot of attention during the last uh, 10 years because also you can generate a lot of data and train your model on data that didn't cost you a lot. So with few touches from an artist, you can generate data in big data if you want with different scenarios and backgrounds. You also, we also support uh, we have tools for training and for training we have NVIDIA offers you with pre-trained models, pre-trained models that you can find on NVIDIA GPU Cloud. It's a repository. You can go there. You'll find, for example, ResNet, uh, VGT. You can find uh, YOLO uh, models and also the list goes on and on. We're going to talk about that later. You can use Tau Toolkit for training, which is zero coding, a training toolkit so you can just with command line you can train a model and that simplifies uh, the training process and also it allows you to do a lot of optimization processes something like pruning we're going to talk about that later as well it also uh, the metropolis ecosystem also offers you with tools to build your system so as we talked about the deployment, we talked about that the AI is a core of the, of the edge AI. However, a whole pipeline needs to be accelerated in order for us not to hit a bottleneck, a bottleneck in the middle. And that's where you can find, for example, the VST uh, video storage toolkit where you can manage and save and store the videos that you can collect uh, on. The, um, from the devices. We have DeepStream, which is our tool for deployment uh, 
highly efficient computer vision systems, and it uses Triton and TensorRT. And also we have the Metropolis Microservices, which is uh, used, for example, to build cloud native applications, but might be a little bit out of scope here. And also to manage our deployment here, we have tools to manage the deployment. We have the NVIDIA fleet command, which allow you to provision devices and uh, basically uh, authenticate with these devices and manage the deployment that you are having on these devices. You can run updates to it, and also um, you can get information about the health of the device over there. And also, you can have any cloud. You can have, for example, you can deploy it on any cloud you want. It's compliant with all, uh, as you have seen in the last uh, session. Um, so basically, it was you know comparison between the three cloud providers, you can use one of them, you can use anyone else, uh, anything else for, for managing your deployment. And also regarding any cloud here, you have the registries on NGC where you can, for example, uh, deploy, where you can get your containers, build your containers, and help you with Helm charts and everything like that. So let's talk about, okay, how can we start? Okay, right now we have talked about the overview. How can it help us? How can we start with training? NVIDIA offers you uh, with pre-trained models, um, comes with pre-trained models. Right now you can go to the NGC, you can browse its catalog and you will find pre-trained models uh, that you can use. These pre-trained models is trained on wide range of data sets and also it's highly accurate and it's built to perform. So basically you expect it to be highly efficient as well. For example, if you found the ResNet on the, on the research field and ResNet is you know, achieving this X accuracy, you will find the ResNet on the, on the NGC performance performing either uh, as good as a state of the art, if not a little bit better. Okay, so the next question is going to be, okay, right now we are having a lot of models. You can find, for example, models on the zoo, uh, a lot of repositories. What are the models that you can find on NDC? So we have pre-trained models, generic one, which serves as backbone for you if you want to do something like transfer learning in general. And we support models for image classification. We support models for object detection and semantic segmentation. This is a support matrix that grows with time. So I think we are witnessing days where Tau, uh, where a new version actually of, uh, of, of, of our training ecosystem is being released, Tau uh, number four, version four. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be released in December. So right now you can see as this is a support matrix for the models, it grows with time. These models are generic models. It's trained on benchmark and also proprietary data sets uh, at NVIDIA, and it's also high performance. You can use these models with transfer learning to fine tune uh, towards your goal. We also have purpose built models, and these purpose built models offer you a more specific models that you can tackle certain use case. Let's say that you have PeopleNet, which is um, specializes on detecting pedestrians and people in the streets, people in general. Also, you have 3D pose estimation, which is specialized in, in detecting the 3D pose uh, of a human being, which is very efficient when it comes to um, Factory, for example, monitoring, for example, if you want to monitor if someone is having holding good posture or not, someone having his hands in the right place or not, maybe it's dangerous to put your hand in this device, in this machine, that also can be detected with post estimation. You can have post classification, post and action classification as well, and the list is basically huge. Uh, license plate is one of um, are very frequently 
frequently used uh, models as well, so license plate uh, recognition and detection. Uh, we have Chinese one, also we have US based one, but also you can fine tune it. I mean, fine tuning is not limited to the generic models, it's also, lim it's also applicable here. So this is regarding the pre-trained model. So basically you can go to the NGC, ngc.com, uh, sorry, NVIDIA ngc.com, and basically browse uh, this um, repository and find the best models that fits your model, uh, that fits your use case. And once you have done that, once you have chosen a model, then you can download this model and basically try to retrain with it. So how can you fine tune it? That's the job of Tau Toolkit. So Tau Toolkit is our toolkit for training, alignment, to, uh, training, adaptation, and optimization of, uh, of the model. You start usually with one of the pre-trained models, and then you can use Tau Toolkit to fine tune towards your goal. Find your model towards your goal. It works with your workstations, it works in the cloud, and also it works on DTX machines. So whatever hardware you have, it would work with. It allows you to train and adapt your model towards your goal, and also optimize uh, your model finally. And also you can export it later to work with the deployment um, tools, as we have something like DeepStream. It offers you a lot also with few uh, and very vital uh, tools for optimization. One of them is model pruning. And model pruning is a technique where you can omit all of these connections uh, that doesn't contribute to the final output. So if we, if, we, if we did a histogram of a neural network weights, we will find a lot of weights are just concentrated uh, around the zeros. And all of these multiplications that happens inside the zeros, inside this area is basically, it's dead. Like it doesn't contribute and it doesn't add any value. So by just omitting these calculations, we can gain a lot of performance boost and also we can reduce the size of the memory of uh, the footprint of the model. So, by just omitting these zero connections, we can get up to 8x memory uh, reduced model. So eight times less than 10 times of memory. And also we can produce almost 2x high uh, throughput when it comes to uh, performance. This is the first thing that comes handy with Tau Toolkit. So Tau Toolkit allows you to train your model, fine tune it towards your goal, and also it allows you to do model pruning. But this is not the only optimization that you can get with Style Toolkit. So with Style Toolkit, you can do quantization aware training as well. So there are two kinds of quantization. Post-training quantization, where you can optimize it or quantize it with TensorRT or something. Um, and also quantization aware training. The good thing with quantization aware training is that you don't lose uh, accuracy while doing that, because basically while during the training, you take care of the future operation. You train towards the goal of having a quantized model, let's say FP16, FP8, uh, sorry, N8 or N4 models, if your hardware support that. So pruning, quantization, and also automatic mix precision, which is an optimized way of uh, doing the training, because some Sometimes, for example, for convolution and multi matrix multiplication, you don't need so much higher resolution when it comes to training, so it's fine to do it on FP16. While for some other layers, something like the summation, exponential, and the loss function, you need to, fi to have fine-grained uh, operations here, so you, can, you should do it on FP32. And that's actually what Style Toolkit does for you during the training automatically. So it automatically offloads uh, the operations that needs more processing power to, for example, FP60, FP32 uh, operations, and what can be done on FP16 will be done on FP16. 
So actually, it reduces the time for training. So Tau Toolkit, you can find it everywhere. So you can use it with AWS, you can use it with Azure, you can use it with Google Cloud. It comes handy with NVIDIA VMI, uh, the virtual machine image. Uh, I think in AWS it's called AMI as well. AMI with A. And also you can have this container and deploy it in your private cloud. You, you can deploy it on your machine workstation. So it offers you a wide range of uh, applications here, of ways of applications here. Let's move to the second part. How can we build our system? Okay, right now we're having, um, yeah. So how can we build our system? So in order to accelerate a, a whole pipeline, so computer vision on the edge is basically not only the model, but it's also every single part uh, all, all over the, um, the pipeline. We have the video capturing, how to interface, we have how to interface with the camera, how to capture the stream, how to decode the stream into something meaningful, which is images, and how to pre-process these images in a fast way and push it forward to AI inferencing. And then you collect, you do some tracking and maybe collect some A analytics and send it somewhere on the cloud or save it locally. So it's a whole pipe acceleration, pipeline acceleration. If you just accelerated the AI inferencing, you will have a bottleneck, for example, in the capture decode. You will have a bottleneck in maybe tracking or, or basically the analytics part. So you need to accelerate the whole pipeline. And that's what you can do with DeepStream. Deepstream accelerate every single component here on a specific hardware, piece of hardware uh, on the GPU. Let's see here, the capture and decode is basically happening on the NVIDIA decoders, which is a separate chip on the, on the NVIDIA GPU. While, for example, the pre-processing can happen on the GPU, the, D, the CUDA cores, uh, and the the AI inferencing happening on the GPU cores, uh, which is um, the CUDA cores and also the Tensor cores. And then you have tracking with different options for hardware. And finally, you have a visualization and messaging. Each one of them happen on a separate, uh, on its respective piece of hardware. And also this allows you to accelerate everything within the same piece of hardware on the GPU. And to have a closer look on that, it basically means that usually, not usually, uh, it basically means that when we when we capture the frame, we do it uh, on the GPU and we create a buffer on the GPU. We don't do any memory copies since then. We just pass the pointer uh, of that on the GPU. So it enables you to have a zero memory copy pipeline, which adds a huge boost in performance when it comes to an edge device because latency is very uh, a problem. It's a problem here. So basically, one time copy from CPU to GPU and zero memory copies between the GPU. That's how DeepStream uh, accelerates your workload. And then finally, also, I will find a thing I want to mention about DeepStream. It allows you to interact with clouds. So you have a message broker within your pipeline and basically this message broker can send MQTT messages to different uh, MQTT uh, receivers on the other side. Let's say it's Greengrass and AWS, Kafka, if you have um, custom installation, uh, any generic MQTT, rapid MQTT uh, server as well would work, Azure IoT and Redis. You have message broker to send all of this information as well. And also it supports more complex uh, architectures. Like, for example, if you have a typical uh, industrial inspection uh, architecture like that, the way we see it, uh, first you start with camera interface and then you have video management system, the PST. You send these videos to, let's say, um, deep stream application with several primary and secondary. Uh, 
inference engine and then basically you send it, you get the analytics to the multiplexer. You also have another path where you do something else with your models, uh, with your, uh, with your uh, videos. And then for example, a third pipeline, we do computer vision, custom computer vision pipeline. And basically you send all of this information and send it to a cloud. So it's also work on Jetson and EGX devices and on the cloud. So that's how you accelerate the deployment. So we talked about how can you accelerate the training? How can you accelerate the deployment as a deployment as a build? And right now we're going to talk about the deployment. How can you deploy? So with deployment, we have a NVIDIA fleet command and also we have NGC registries that we can use for that. So if we start with the left here, the this is a, a general architecture of how Edge AI uh, from Edge to Cloud or Edge to, to a data center uh, architecture looks like. So basically you start with the training and you, for example, you did the training on the, on the Cloud or on your data center, you push it to an Edge device and this Edge device collect information from sensors, the sensors are cameras in our case here, and then you send all of this information back to the data center for analytics. That's the general approach here. So this is how it works when it comes to the architecture, a uh, global uh, view of the architecture. This is just a big picture of it. NVIDIA, uh, NGC offered you with several components that can help you with it, with this architecture. So when you go to NVIDIA NGC, at ngc.nvidia.com, you can find containers that help you to, for example, deploy everywhere. So if you want to deploy with containers, you can build on top of our containers there. You can find containers for DeepStream, for example, where you can build your application with. You can find containers for Triton inference servers and also different uh, third party containers. You can find a lot of things you just need to browse for your use case. You can also find models. We talked about that before. You can just download the model and deploy it or fine tune it and optimize it and deploy it. You can find industry apps. You also can find examples how to build systems. You can find Helm charts and Helm chart examples and also collections of uh, and also collections. So that's on NGC. So basically it facilitates this part for you. And also we have a fleet command. And fleet command is a managed cloud service. Basically that allows you to, to, to deploy and manage your, your devices on the edge. So if you have like 100 devices, EGX devices, on the edge and you want to manage all of these devices together, you can just uh, provision all of these devices to NVIDIA uh, fleet command and monitor its health. You can put push uh, its uh, push updates. You can um, do over the air updates even. Um, it's one click deployment and you have like open APIs uh, to talk uh, to, sorry to talk to here. Uh, yeah, so basically it allows you to provision your devices and manage uh, all of these devices you're having at scale. So basically uh, that's a use case. I have here some demo. I hope you can see it. Uh, I will just go through it. I will skip all of these details to show you the functionalities that you can find with a fleet command. So basically it allows you to set up first set up locations and connect your devices and maybe load your applications. Let's say this is the edge applications that can, uh, I'm gonna run. And when you set up location, it means for example, that you are having different locations here. And within this location, you can generate uh, maybe supplications and also you can generate uh, deployments. So, for example, let's say that they have a computer over here on the location number one. You create this application and then basically you can just create a deployment and push and pull this deployment and push it 
uh, yeah, and push it to the system. And basically, you will have a health monitor here telling you how uh, the location is, and also um, how the deployment goes. You can generate registries for your applications and load it to your system. And finally, you can push it to your edge device. And once it's installed on the on the each location, it basically will give you a feedback here. So this is how it how it goes for edge devices. And here is an example of how it's working in real life. This is a deep stream example. So this is a deep stream pipeline working on almost 30 devices here. Or less. Uh, this is also a few other examples. This is uh, what I have for fleet command. This is a demo that I have. So, so far we have talked about uh, NVIDIA NGC. How can it accelerate um, your workloads uh, for registries, uh, containers, and also uh, models, Helm charts. We talked about NVIDIA Cloud Toolkit. And also, also we talked about DeepStream. So we talked about the whole ecosystem here. And finally, we talked about uh, NVIDIA Fleet Command for deployment and managing your deployments. OK, so how can we start? So if you want to get up to speed, um, you'll find a lot of documentation. You can just go to um, Metropolis NVIDIA. And basically, uh, you start there. You have um, the huge, huge documentation for you uh, for each tool. Um, as I said, Metropolis is an ecosystem, so Metropolis is an umbrella. Metropolis itself is not an SDK. However, it contains several SDKs, something for training, something for deployment, and something for management gear deployments. You can read through the documentation. You can find a lot of information, webinars, uh, and on-demand uh, on demand, um, videos on NGC, as, or sorry, on GTC as well, uh, a lot of valuable sessions. And also, we have something called uh, NVIDIA Deep Learning Institute. And the NVIDIA Deep Learning Institute is our uh, training academy. You can find there a lot of free courses uh, you can take. For example, um, you can take for free this uh, Jetson Nano course. You can take a lot of accelerated uh, data science course. You can take a lot of accelerated machine learning courses as well. So. It employs within these courses a lot of techniques. Um, it's not only limited to NVIDIA technology. You can find uh, courses deals with Keras and MXNet, PyTorch, and TensorFlow. Uh, you have three uh, kind of uh, modes here. You have free courses. You have self-paced courses uh, where you can have um, videos as guides. And also you can have instructor-led courses. And that also can be organized through the DLI. Uh, also, together with uh, DLI, uh, we have um, we have an offer for you. So right now we are we are we are giving this course uh, for free for you. So if you can just visit this URL, use this risk. Uh, so, sorry, use this code for the risk course. And the risk course basically it's very relevant to what we are. Um, we have discussed here. It's basically deals with Tau Toolkit, how to train the model. So basically, it's the first element in the HAI here. So please uh, use that. Uh, it's for free, and it's also available for today. So when you register, you, you just need to register for today. Just register this code to your account. And then you will have it for six months. If you didn't do it today, basically, you, will, you might not be able to use it because the code is only valid for today. So please take a screenshot, take a picture of it, um, copy it on paper, whatever. So again, go to courses, NVIDIA, DLI events, and use this code. And yeah, so. I'm allowed for 45 minutes. Right now we are almost 40. 
So thank you. Thank you for attending. We're having around five minutes for discussion and question if you want. Yeah. So let's see. Okay, so, so far, no questions. All right, if you, if you, if you found any question that you would love to ask later on, uh, please send me. Uh, this is my email. This is my name. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can add me on LinkedIn as well. Um, yeah, and let me know if you have any question. Other than that, back to you.